Drilling and work over operations is the most or the second most risky job in the world. The total number of rigs in operation in KOC today is about 130 rigs, and this will increase to more than 140 rigs within the coming year. More rigs means more chances for incidents. We in drilling operations have to take all precautions and the necessary measures to reduce incidents to the minimum. Picture speaks a thousand words. This video presentation is an initiative by the Development Drilling Group 1, demonstrating the lost time injury incidents that occurred in the past in pictorial and video formats. This will be a very powerful tool for our workforce in drilling operations to minimize and eliminate incidents. Seven LTIs have been recorded over the last seven months in both development drilling and workover groups. These statistics are far from our set HSE targets. An attempt to control and eliminate the lost time incidents Development Drilling and Workover Team 3 thought of an out-of-box initiative. In this initiative, we are translating the incident in a video form to describe the safe way of operation and reducing the risk, ultimately less number of incidents. So I would like to congratulate all my team members involved in this initiative and continue improving our HSE performance. Thank you. Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Development Drilling and Work Over Team 3 pleased to introduce this presentation. This film has been made by Development Drilling and Work Over Team 3, with the aim to convey the basic guideline to rig crew, for provide similar pulsation damping repair work. We will discuss now, that incident happened while, job of pulsation dampener repair. Location. Rig, say no back, 284, well, Bergen, 1144. On the 19th of October 2016, the rig crew consisting of one derrick man and three floor men, were opening the pulsation dampener top cover plate, of mud pump number two, in order to replace the diaphragm. The crew already unscrewed and removed 11 out of 12 nuts on the cover, and while they were opening the nut of the last stud, suddenly, the top cover plate popped up, and entrapped nitrogen pressure, from the dampener released, consequently, the derrick man who was standing on the mud pump, fell down on his face, resulting into face nose injury, one of the floor men, who was standing on a nearby pipe at a height of approximately 2 feet, fell on the ground and sustained minor injury on his forehead, both the IPS were immediately given first aid, by the rig medic and sent to Aden Hospital, for treatment. What went wrong? 1. Pulsation dampener pressure was not bled off, prior opening the top cover plate, the pressure gauge was also not checked, and the crew commenced the work, assuming that pulsation dampener was already depressurized. 2. Failure to follow procedure. 3. Pulsation dampener pressure was not bled off, despite it was identified as a hazard control measure in the jolt safety analysis as well as in the permit to work. 4. Although cold work permit was obtained for this non-routine activity, the permit applicant and the job supervisor, I mean the rig mechanic, was not present at the job location to supervise the work, the crew members were performing the activity without proper supervision. 5. Lack of knowledge and skill experience. 6. Misperception of risk, and inadequate pre-task checking. At Rig Sanobic 9, 2, 6, and under supervision of Rig Supervisor and HSC Department of Team 3, we will discuss the safety procedure to repair the pulsation dampener. Rig Mechanic has a routine checkup for pulsation dampener pressure, observed that the pressure was lost and he decided to open the pulsation dampener top cover plate in order to replace the diaphragm.
Rig mechanic informed the rig manager and safety man about the situation and the required repair. Safety man prepared job safety analysis, cold permit to work, and arranged to conduct for safety meeting with the authorized persons who will do the repair job. Electrician started to isolate the pump power, electric isolation. Assistant driller and Derek Mann started to close the line's valve, mechanical isolation. Mechanic started to secure the suction valve, discharge valve, and bleed off valve of mud pump. Safety man went to the rig floor to inform driller of the repair and switch off the pump and put the sign of switch off and repair. Safety man and rig manager went to the company man Mr. Tamer and informed him about the repair and to get approval for start repair. Company man Mr. Tamer signed the permit to work and gave his instructions. Safety man conducted safety meeting with electrician, mechanic, assistant driller, Derek man and the crane operator to discuss the job safety analysis and start the repair job. Mechanic started to check pulsation dampener pressure and bled off same and confirmed pressure was already depressurized. Assistant driller and derrickman started to unscrew the nuts and remove the bolts and keep four nuts not released. Derek Mann lifted the cover, with certificated belt and tagline, started remove the remaining four nuts, and removed the cover by crane. Mechanic check and fix the pulsation dampener from inside and change the bladder. Derek Mann and assistant driller lifted the top cover flange and installed.
mechanic started to check the nitrogen cylinder, and be sure only pure nitrogen will be filled the dampener, and started to discharge operation, to the desired pressure. Electrician started to release the electric isolation. Derek Mann started to release the mechanical isolation and open pump valves to be ready for use. Safety man and rig manager went to the company man to inform him that the repair job has been finished and closed permit to work and pump ready to start. What are the recommended corrective actions? All pressurized equipment and systems should be depressurized before any maintenance work is carried out. All the control measures for the jolt safety analysis to be to communicated and explained to the crew during pre-jolt safety meeting. The permit applicant and job supervisor and the issuer shall ensure implementation of all identified controls mentioned in the jolt safety analysis and permit against the identified risks. All non-routine maintenance works are to be carried out under continuous supervision. Caution signs and instructions shall be used as antecedents on the pulsation dampener. Necessary instruction and relevant training shall be provided for the workers on safe working with pressurized and energized equipment or system. Last but not least, we hope this may help you, we hope to hear from you, and we wish you the very best. Welcome ladies and gentlemen. This film has been made by Development Drilling and Workover Team 3 with the aim to convey the basic guidelines to recruit or prevent similar incident at trig site. We will discuss lost time injury incident while picking up 9 5 by 8 inch casing pipe. Location Sabria 618 incident date April 26, 2016 while picking up 9 5 by 8 inch casing pipe from the casing pipe rack. The injured party roused about was assigned to use a tag line during casing latch and picking up by rig floor. IP did not notice that his right foot was inside tag line's loop. When the casing was picked up, the tag line wrapped around his right leg and started to pull him towards the pipe rack. IP jumped over the pipe rack and fell to the ground on his hip. Floor hand signaled to driller to stop the operations. What went wrong?
VIP was totally not alert and unaware of the hazards when handling the taglines while hoisting the load. No banks man was assigned during picking up casing. Inadequate supervision during the casing running activity. Rig floor crew failed to timely alert the driller while roustabout was pulled. Inadequate risk assessment. Entanglement of tagline was not captured in JSA. Tool pusher conducted the pre-job safety meeting with rig crew. Never step on tagline. Never wrap around your body and arms. Pick up the casing only after the rigger gives all OK signal. Ensure proper signal between crane operator rig floor signal man and rigger on the ground. on site, providing excellent control, even with one hand. Unlike ropes, tag attach won't fray, is tangle-proof, and presents no trip hazard or cut-offs when in use. Now ground operatives can carry out precise load control with confidence and speed. Quick attach and release means no time-wasting knots to... Question and answer. should be ensured the length of tag line before lifting the casing. Is all lifting activities to be supervised by competent supervisor? Is dedicated banksman to be appointed for all lifting operations at rig site? Welcome ladies and gentlemen. This film has been made by Development Drilling and Workover Team 3 with the aim to convey the basic guidelines to recruit or prevent similar incident to trig site. We will discuss lost time injury of Baker Hughes logging operator. Location Bergan 1183 date of incident 6 October 2016. At the time of incident wireline logging was running by Baker Hughes, Mr. Kanai Mandel Baker Hughes field operator requested BWD night tool pusher to provide diesel for logging truck night tool pusher instructed forklift operator to fill BWD day tank and transfer the diesel to the logging truck forklift operator filled the day tank from rig main storage tank lifted in forklift and approached to the logging truck the injured person connected the hose from the day tank to the logging truck's fuel tank and gave upward signal to lift the tank to create gravitation force that helps in increased flow of diesel when tank was lifted up ip was not visible to the forklift operator as he was under the raised day tank after a few minutes the day tank slipped from forklift and fell on injured person's body immediately forklift operator came down and asked for help Nearby drilling crew and Baker Hughes, logging personnel rushed to the scene and removed the day tank from the IP's body. Bleeding from left leg was noticed. Immediately IP transferred to Aden Hospital by rig ambulance for medical treatment. What went wrong? No proper fuel transfer procedure or guidelines was in place. The position of forklift was very close to the logging truck and created the line of fire. Forklift operator and logging operator did not understand the severity of risk while transferring fuel with the help of forklift.
wire line operator walks into senior tool pusher office for cold permit to work to start the wire line job. Schlumberger operator informed to his senior officer that he needs fuel. Hot work permit is issued to Schlumberger and required documents checked by senior to the pusher. Mechanic flags to the forklift for mobilizing the portable diesel tank near the wireline unit. Forklift places the portable diesel tank and backs out. Mechanic grounds the portable diesel tank and physically check the hose and diesel tank before transferring the fuel to ensure everything is safe.
fuel is being transferred. Schlumberger operator checks and finds required fuel is transferred and advises to stop fuel transfer. Diesel inside the hose drain to wire line unit tank. Forklift safely moves out the portable diesel tank from wire line unit. Welcome ladies and gentlemen. This film has been made by Development Drilling and Workover Team 3 with the aim to convey the basic guidelines to recruit or prevent similar incident to trig site. We will discuss lost time injury of falling from mud tank handrails. Location MN103, date of incident October 22016. At the time of the incident, rig up activities was under progress at MN103 location. After raising the mast, guy line support fixing job was under progress. One of the guy line got stuck to mud tank sunshed. An injured person was trying to get it free by standing on mud tank railing and pulling. While pulling the guy line, injured person lost his balance and fell down on ground at 12 feet. And his head got hit to pipeline fitted to mud tank. First aid was given at rig site by medic and shifted him to hospital by rig ambulance. What went wrong? Driller who was supervising the job got involved in job and trying to get stuck guy line free by placing himself in extremely wrong position. Poor communication between driller and rest of the working crew. Driller was out of sight from assistant driller who was pulling the guy line. Not using full body safety harness while standing over mud tank railings to release stuck guy line. Inadequate job safety analysis and control measures. Misperception of risk and inadequate pre-task checking. Guy line gets stuck on the mud tank roof while rigging up. Toolbox <laughs> dock for releasing the stuck guy line. Guyline is released by using hook without stepping on handrails. If guy line cannot be removed by hook, ladder should be used with a person holding the ladder. Person using ladder uses full body harness and secures himself with lanyard and successfully remove the stuck guy line.
safe method of pulling the guy line and connecting to the anchor block while rigging up without getting stuck on the mud tank roof. Safe method of releasing the guy line from the anchor block while rigging down without getting stuck on the mud tank roof. Question and answer. Is it safe to stand on a handrail? Do we need fall protection above 1.8 meter height? Do we need to ensure proper communication and coordination? Do we know the risk of working above 1.8 meter without appropriate fall protection? Do we have job safety analysis which covers releasing stuck guy line? Welcome ladies and gentlemen. This film has been made by Development Drilling and work over Team 3 with the aim to convey the basic guidelines to recruit or prevent similar incident at trig site. We will discuss lost time injury of truck pusher being hit by drill pipe box gate, location, MN, 224, date of incident 15 April 2016. The task was loading drill pipe box on truck by using two cranes, subcontractor truck pusher, assistant driller, and two roustabouts were involved in this task. The roustabout rigged up the slings 
and truck pusher was giving signal to the cranes. Injured person truck pusher was standing seven feet approximately away from the truck while they placing the drill pipe box on the truck. At this point, saddle of the truck and P gate from drill pipe box rubbed against each other. And drill pipe box T gate popped up from the socket and fell down to the ground and hit on right leg ankle of truck pusher. Hospital check revealed fractures on right ankle leg. What went wrong? Injured person standing close to suspended drill pipe box. Saddle of the truck was not removed prior to load drill pipe box. Pin was not installed on drill pipe box T gate. Injured person was standing close near the truck, which was being loaded. Stop work authority not utilized by co-worker and supervisor. While loading drill pipe and T gate was rubbing with saddle. Rig move safety meeting. Safety officer physically checking crane certification. Drill pipe box gate secured by pins on both ends. Crew ensures both pins of gate is secured with safety keeper. Drill pipe box gate pins are secured with safety collar pin. Riggers connecting sling and tag line for lifting. Saddle poles removed prior to loading drill pipe box. Flagman flags for lifting the box. Drill pipe box lowered to the truck safely. Saddle poles are installed and slings are removed. Crew ensures saddle poles are in place and task completed successfully. Question and answer. Is it safe to stand under or close to suspended load? Is it safe lift drill pipe box without securing the gate with pins? Is it safe to lower the box on the truck without removing saddle poles? Do we have JSA covering the risk of drill pipe box gate falling down? Is it safe to lift load without securing all loose objects on load? Welcome ladies and gentlemen. This film has been made by Development Drilling and Workover Team 3 with the aim to convey the basic guidelines to recruit or prevent similar incident to trig site. We will discuss lost time injury, cable sheave hitch Schlumberger operator foot. Location Brigand 1057, date of incident 6 June 2016.
during NAS Piron, the cable got trapped in the sheave, then the crew leveled it down to the rig flow. In a horizontal position to fix the problem, Schlumberger crew removed the center bolt of the sheave and the rig assistant driller was instructed to lift the sheave from horizontal position to vertical position in order to secure the bolt. And during the process assistant driller applied more tension than what was required, which led the sheave to be lifted above two feet from the floor, and the sheave fell down, hitting the right foot of the injured person which results in hairline fracture. What went wrong? Injured person placed his right foot in the line of fire that is exactly below suspended cable sheave. Assistant driller applied more tension than what was required which led the sheave to be lifted. Above two feet from floor and sheave fell down hitting the right foot of the injured person. Actions to correct the cable position inside the cable sheave were not properly planned. To tension the sling without securing the cable sheave with bolt and pin. Failure to identify hazard and risk that wheel may fell down if they did not install bolt properly. Schlumberger supervisor approaches Sinopec for taking PTW for pulling out the ESP. Okay, Osirig supervisor endorses the permit to work. Pre job safety meeting with Schlumberger and Sinope crews. Pull out of hole with the SP assembly. ESP's pool operator realizes the cable stuck in the SP sheave and communicates to rig floor ESP guy to stop the job. Rig floor ESP guy communicates to driller to stop the job. Driller notifies the rig manager about the ESP cable stuck problem. Lowering ASP sheave from monkey board to rectify the issue at rig floor. Cable stuck in sheave. Stuck cable can be manually released by changing the position of cable. If cable cannot be released manually, cable can be cut and stuck cable can be removed. As per the Schlumber JSOB, center bolt should not be removed at the rig floor. Successfully released the stuck cable and resumed back to operation. Question and answer. Is it safe to stand near or in the line of fire of suspended cable sheave? Is it safe to lift ESP sheave above rig floor level with center bolt being removed? Is it recommended to remove the center bolt at rig floor? Do we have job safety analysis which covers releasing stuck cable? Welcome ladies and gentlemen. This film has been made by Development Drilling and Workover Team 3 with the aim to convey the basic guidelines to recruit to prevent similar incident at trig site. We will discuss lost time injury of Derek Mann while running casing.
Location R, A614, date of incident 3rd September 2016. While rig crew was running 13-3-8 casing, there was cross-connection of casing pipe. And consequently the crew was not being able to make connection properly. For making a proper connection, the driller asked the derrick man to hold single joint elevator to facilitate centering and at the same time instructed floor man to operate the power tong. During the process, the derrick man's right hand got pressed between casing pipe and tong hanging sling and he sustained a crush injury on his right hand arm. What went wrong? Improper position or posture for the task, the derrickman was holding single joint elevator, while floor man was rotating pipe with power tongue. Derrickman did not recognize the hazard. Crew did not use stop work authority. In adequate risk assessment, crew did not recognize hazard before starting the activity. Pre-job safety meeting for running casing. Rig crew stabbing the casing. Assistant driller identifies the casing has been cross-threaded and informs this to the driller and derrick man on the stabbing board. Assistant driller advises the derrick man to step back on the stabbing board so that cross-threaded casing can be reversed out. Ensure the hook is properly attached with the casing tong, so the tong will not accidentally release from secure point and move towards rotary table. Ensure the tong movement is controlled by the tail rope attached on it to prevent finger injuries between tong and other fixed objects. Ensure the snub line is of adequate length to control swing movement. Cross-threaded casing is reversed out and then made to the required torque safely. Assistant driller completes connection safely and communicates to Derek man and driller. Question and answer. Is it safe to place hand between casing tongue hanging rope and casing? Is it safe to position yourself in line of fire of tongue hanging rope when tongue is being operated? Is risk of hand being caught between tongue hanging rope and casing is covered in JSA and communicated to everyone? Do we have an effective stop work authority program?